Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vardhaman Deshpande. I'm an office development MVP, and I currently work with Valo on the Teams product, Teams-based uh, product where we're using SPFX, where we're using bots. Uh, so uh, recently, I've been involved in a lot of that space. And on this on this demo on this call, we'll go through something called Teams messaging extensions and Teams task modules powered by SPFX. Now, I wrote a blog post a couple of uh, weeks ago, and in that uh, we we talk about uh, specifically messaging extensions and SPFX. Now, uh, now after that, we decided to kind of uh, agree on coming on the call, and uh, then I realized that it's not just a messaging extensions; it's basically task modules, and anywhere task modules can be uh, presented in Teams, you can do that with SPFX. You can have SPFX web part come come uh, come up as uh, task modules. Modules. So uh, I will follow this up with the blog post with more details. So the demo we are going to see today is actually uh, has a couple of more things than the blog post. So and then I'll follow it up with uh, another post and then potentially I will uh, push all of this to the PNP samples repo as well so that uh, all of us can take advantage of this. Now uh, we will be talking about extensions and task modules. Uh, so first, let's see what uh, messaging extensions are. Now, any the messaging extensions basically help you execute custom code or custom logic within the context of or with, without leaving the context of uh, of teams so you it could be that you uh, you invoke that logic on messages which are already posted in teams from this ellipsis menu going to more actions uh, and then you you can have uh, certain tasks show up there uh, messaging extensions can also be brought up from the command bar uh, and lastly, messaging extensions can also be brought up from the compose bar. Like for example, the praise applications, which is in Teams, is is, is a messaging extensions, uh, messaging extension. Sorry. Uh, and similarly, uh, similarly, uh, you can use SPFX web parts, which as which show up as messaging extensions as well. Now, first talk about the message actions or the messaging extensions, which are. Uh, invoke on messages posted already in teams so i'll go to the ellipsis menu i'll i'll go to more actions and uh, i'll invoke the messaging extensions and the sharepoint framework web part can be can be brought up as part of that now where do we configure this uh, there's two types of ways in which you can configure a messaging extensions uh, first is the teams manifest in a Teams manifest, you have the Compose extensions uh, section. Inside that, you can you can set up your messaging extension. Uh, there's two types of uh, extensions: static and dynamic. First, we'll have a look at the static extensions, where you can configure the entire task module options or task module properties right from the Teams app. So you can see that uh, uh, the Teams uh, the, the SPFX URL is configured here. And the way to kind of decide whether uh, whether the extension is a static one or a dynamic one is using this fetch task property, where if you set that as false, then Teams is going to see if you have a task module defined as part of your manifest. Uh, in that task module, in the SPFX URL, a couple of important things to note that it's it's not the same as the SPFX tab based URL. There is a different SPX page behind the scenes, Teams, Teams task, task hosted app. And, and then the other information is more or less similar uh, where you specify the component ID of the SPFX web part uh, and, then, and then the SPFX task module uh, shows up. Now, the one good thing about this approach is that you don't need to do a lot with Teams bots and stuff. You just create the manifest, you deploy the SPFX web part, you configure the task module over here, and then and then you can see that the, the web part starts working within Teams after the app is installed. Now, when, when we invoke this extension, you can see that in the SPFX context, there's already a lot of information available, like what was the team uh, on which the extension was invoked, the channel ID, on which particular message did you invoke is. But there is not a lot, there's not all the information which we might need. For example, we might need the message body. So this information is not available by default on the SPFX side. 
so let me go to the spfx web part and this is a this is a normal boilerplate spfx web part without react without uh, without any framework so just to demo the the the, the pure code so you can see that inside the teams context uh, so inside the spfx context it's the teams context and you have the uh, various properties available already called group id channel id and chat id now when we invoke the messaging extension there is this thing called parent message id as well uh, we we will fetch that and from there, then uh, to get more details about the message, you can then use the Graph API. So uh, the, the Graph Teams API lets you fetch all the details about uh, about a message or a chat message or a channel. Uh, so just having this ID available as part of the SPFX context gives you some uh, some some data, which then you can use to fetch even more relevant data. Now. One thing about this is that uh, we have to depend a little bit on what properties are available out of the box within the SPFX context. Now, I, I came, came across a slight limitation. Where, as you can see, uh, this is a top level message. I will invoke the static message extension and then when fetching the body, uh, we'll get the message body. Now, when I invoke the same extension on a reply, at that time, I the the parent message ID property keeps pointing at the top level message, and and you can see that the body is still uh, being fetched for the top level message. So, and then I knew that uh, whenever we work with Teams bots and Teams messaging extensions. You, you there is a, a lot of data which is sent from Teams to the to the bot. So just a sample of that data you can see on the Microsoft Docs files that uh, this this data is uh, is basically everything which the which the bot behind the scenes. Uh, receives so you have uh, you have the ID of the messages on which it was invoked. You have even the 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 client of the team, like whether it was a desktop client, whether it was the web client, whether it was a mobile client, and so on. And then you have a lot of channel data. Now I knew that one of these properties was the was the ID of the reply on this. So then that kind of leads to the other type of messaging extension, which was the dynamic messaging extension. Now, the way you configure the dynamic extension is, is like this, where you d define the fetch task as true. That means that Teams is going to go and talk to the configured bot, uh, which is the which is this bot. Uh, it's going to say that, uh, uh, do you have a, a fetch task for me to return? And uh, so it's not going to look uh, for the task or info object, which is configured in the manifest itself. So I think this is a slightly more flexible approach, uh, but then it has a kind of a, a see on you having a bot configured behind the scenes and uh, inside that then you have much more options so all the all the data which you saw here in the which is sent to the bot from teams is accessible in a strongly typed way inside the bot now i'm using a dotnet bot uh, configured but then you could use a node.js bot or any any other platform as well which has the bot framework sdk now inside here we are going to get the reply id as well as well as the id of the message and then the exact same we're going to do the exact same thing which is we are going to configure the spfx uh, url and then we are going to pass the stuff which we need as parameters to spfx which is uh, using the message id and the reply to id so this is the exact same thing, but done in the backend way where we get more parameters from the bot framework and we pass those parameters to uh, to SPFX. Uh, inside SPFX again, we look at the query string parameters uh, and then once we get the query string parameters, we'll again use the same graph calls to get the uh, data as well. So uh, to show that, uh, if I go in here and invoke the dynamic messaging extensions here. This sends the message to the bot behind the scenes. The bot fetches the required information and then uh, it gives us the correct message ID and then it uh, gives us the correct text of the message as well. So that's those are the basically the two types, static messaging extensions and dynamic ones. Speaking of task modules, task modules are not only limited uh, in message uh, in in messaging actions so you can even bring up a task module from from the compose box 
So just like you saw, uh, you can bring up SPFX web part as part of uh, from the compose box as well. Now here the chat ID, message ID, message body will be empty because it's not on a message where we are executing this. Uh, you, you still get the same context like the team ID and channel ID, and then you can invoke certain third party services or you can do anything basically, whatever you can do from SPFX, you can do in a task module. Uh, and then another place I find personally is from adaptive cards. So you have uh, adaptive cards posted in Teams uh, uh, where you have a slightly fancier message. Maybe there is a third party app which is posting these adaptive cards. Uh, as part of the SPFX, or sorry, as part of the adaptive card buttons, you can have SPFX task modules open up as well. And uh, you can have the same of context information available there. Uh, so yeah, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, uh, coming back to messaging extensions, as I mentioned, there's two types, the static ones and the dynamic ones. The dynamic ones uh, require you to do a bit more work with the bot behind the scenes. Uh, so I, if you have lots of complex logic, if you are, if you need the immediately all the data which is available as bot, bot framework, then the dynamic uh, approach is probably better. Uh, but if you just want to get started, if you uh, if you want to see how your SPFX web part looks inside task modules, uh, there is there is obviously the the static ones where you just configure the URL in in the Teams manifest, and then the, it should it should start working in Teams. So it's it's easy to get started. But like if you want more control over your messaging extension and task modules with SPFX, the dynamic one with the bot is probably the right way to go in that scenario. Uh, and then, and then the yeah, SPFX supports calling graph API using AAD clients, and uh, you can you can do everything you you want inside the task modules. Then, so just another way in which uh, SPFX can be surfaced inside Teams, in addition to uh, in addition to uh, tabs and personal apps. Um, yeah, that's that's it about the. Question, uh, because I know that you're you're implementing this within the Valo as well, and let's not. This isn't really intended to promote Valo's products, but more on. Can you explain the scenarios and and where you've been using this within the within your implementation? So, what would be the scenario where people would be using this kind of a messaging extension in first place? Because there's questions around that. Yeah, sure. So just to give you an example of uh, Valo specifically, so we I, I work on the ideation product where employees are kind of uh, promoted or or rather uh, employees are encouraged to submit their ideas. So one of the things which uh, we do is we uh, allow the Teams tab or sorry, the Teams message to be promoted as an idea, uh, like from the messaging extensions. Uh, I'm not sure if I have the the uh, the, the app working right now, but just to give the uh, give an example that uh, what you could you could kind of uh, promote the uh, someone posts something in Teams, and then you could uh, you could uh, promote that as an idea throughout the throughout the tenant. So promoting messages, uh, then um, uh, creating something, creating some uh, things like forms and stuff right from the compose box, uh, which which then gives you. Uh, the option to do that with SPFX as well with the Compose extension. So without leaving the context of Teams, if you want to work with Teams data in your third-party application, I think this is a great scenario. Uh, and and uh, sorry, before I forget, uh, I, I'm showing I'm showing uh, all of this as uh, as an example within the Teams channel, but this works in group chats uh, as well. Like for example, if I'm part of a group chat. Uh, I can bring up the same uh, messaging extensions th to it, so you don't have to be in the context of a team. If you if you can execute third-party logic uh, as part of uh, a group chat or a personal chat with someone as well, doesn't have to be in a team's channel. Excellent, thanks, Parthaman. So yeah. really good clarification on the use case because that's always the, the the key point is to understand where would I actually use the capability, not just how do I use the API or or implement things. So really really great stuff. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you.